Alrighty, Mr. Uh, Breeze, Mr. Jim, 0396, uh, one of my reoccurring customers. Basically, we got a uh, Palomar 250 here, a fake AB bias stamp. <laughs> the reason why I say fake AB bias, they've actually got the AB bias circuit, but the problem is, as you can see down here, the... Uh, They've got a choke going from the input transformer to ground, which cancels out the bias. I actually made mistakes doing this when I first started because I was taught wrong. And uh, here's your bias chokes right here to sending the bias to the transistors. I have no idea why they do this. You see these on Palomars only. Palomars and boomers. But anyway, you're saying that it's only doing 100 to 125 watts and the preamp works fine. So it's low power issue going on. So uh, let's see how much she's doing. All right, so let's make sure the switches look good and everything. All right, we got it on high. I've already took a gander in here. One thing I there, there's two things I see I don't really like the output capacitor <sighs> I might have to go get one of my I got one or two of these boards outside of, uh, of just bare boards I might need to look up underneath one of them and I'm thinking this tiny little cap back here is your output capacitor and that just makes no sense to have a little small ceramic cap for that I don't I don't get that but uh we are on 15.26 volts. It is kind of high, but just want to see what the max amount of power. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, just want to see what the basically the max amount of power this thing's going to do with my voltage turned all the way up, just so I can kind of get a max reading. All right, RMS wise, we're just using the bench radio. Okay, I got a 250 watt slug in. Okay. So we are looking at the top scale where you see five, that's 50, 100, uh, 10 is 100, 15 is 150, and so on. This is just RMS. Okay, so we've got about a 10, 15 watt dead key. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's a little low. Oh, dear. Yeah. About 40 RMS. Let's take a look at the peak. Oh, yeah. yeah, about a hundred and hundred and five watts. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a little low. All right, man, let me get up in here and see if I can't uh, get your wattage up for you, man. I think I'm gonna do a power wire upgrade for you, too. These wires are a little thin. Probably had some feedback circuits in there too. I'm going to do a couple of mods for you, man. See if I can't get the power up on this thing a little bit for you. All right, man. I'll be back. All right, Mr. Breeze. Got you ready, cat and picker? <laughs> got you all good, ready to go, bud. Um, luckily, I know these little small lamps, man, because I, I started off working with them a lot. I had quite a few of these type amps when I started learning how to uh, to uh, work on amplifiers at all. And luckily I keep little things like this around for reference. And uh, just having a crappy little board like this around for reference, you know, will, will tell you a lot of things, man. I'll even write little notes on the back. Just reminding me where the input and output of things are. This thing has one crazy design flaw, man, when it comes to the tuning portion. Alright, let me zoom in. Do you see this tiny? Let me get something to point with. And of course, turn the power off before I do. We ain't trying to blow up nothing right after I got done repairing it, do we? <laughs> Uh, you see this tiny, tiny, little bitty five pico fared ceramic cap right here. Uh, you see how tiny that capacitor is? 
that exact size capacitor was being used for your output load capacitor for your output tuning capacitor we'll just put it put it that way um, so all your power was being loaded with that capacitor well not this particular I'm just saying this exact size capacitor um, well for one thing it was the wrong value which you know it's possible that it could have been real close to the right value when the amp was made but now times went on um, and I've also made some changes as well so that you know that could affect it as well and etc you know it's, it's it was no longer the best value for the particular amplifier and plus I didn't get to test the dang thing because it broke in half just removing it I'm sure it probably was devalued and <laughs> wasn't 27 pico ferret anymore but now you have this capacitor for your output load for your output tuning capacitor and I had to add about 14 to 15 pico fared more of a capacitance. This is a 50 pico fared capacitor. And, I, and that's where it tuned out perfect, man. We gained some power, buddy. We did gain more than half power. <laughs> and uh, let me zoom back out here. I went in and added you two feedback circuits right here, which I always like to do to these amplifiers. Okay, I took out these two... Where's the other one? Let me get to work and things get thrown around sometimes here. These two for your top capacitors um, for the output transformer and just put you one big DM19 1000 picofarad cap right here. Alright, and there was no capacitors from collector to ground. That's just something I just like adding to these style. You'll see me doing this uh, to the uh, other Palomars, the boomers and such too. One ahead and add you 100 pico fared of capacitance from the collector to ground. That's what these two caps are right here. You could do 120 if you wish to. Um, that's all up to you. If you want to back the circuit down a little, just a little bit, you could even go up to a 330, etc. So, uh, so I went ahead and added a couple more things like that. And of course, as I mentioned, I went ahead and did a power wire upgrade for you. So you've now got some good stiff 10 gauge coming out of here. This is what was in here before. You know, and this is like 12, 14, actually, I, I would say this is more like 14 gauge wire. And, uh, you know, you really don't need a fuse. The fuse is a big, big current hogger when it's right here by the amp like this. You want your fuse by your source of power. If this is in a mobile, you want your fuse as close to the battery as possible. You want that thing to pop if there's an issue closest to where the current's being pulled from. And, uh, but you know, it's, I guess you can say more being politically correct while a lot of, you see a lot of, uh, what well, I call protiratory, protiratory amplifier builders added fuses to their power wires. Most of us these days, we remove them. <laughs> so you got some good thicker power wire and I went ahead and upgraded all the way to the back of the transformer. And, uh, we've now got about th three times more inductance now on your power wire which is going to help keep that RF signal because you, you got to think about it, you got DC power okay if you look at it on a chart from here to here 27 mega cycles being here of AC elect RF electricity DC being here okay there are they're, they're two different sides of the spectrum yes but you can have 27 mega cycles and DC on the same exact power wire and you you want to keep that RF off that power wire as much as possible you would have to do a crazy filter network to literally eliminate it to zero that's not what we're trying to do here we're trying to eliminate it to tolerable levels and uh, that's why we it's good to add around 20 30 to even 40 uh, micro Henry's of, of inductance to your power wire you want to keep it around 500 ohms to the lowest frequency that you'll be using there's a formula for that which I did not have stored in my hard drive up above my two shoulders but anyway um, so I went ahead and add you a ferrite bead to the power wire and plus three wraps right here on the output transformer another thing I went ahead and did too man 
is added some uh, filter capacitance on the hot bus down here because all it had was a 4.7 microfarad electrolytic which is fine but for frequency reasons which I ain't gonna get into but when it comes to filtering I went ahead and added a 104 uh, 100,000 picofarad cap down there on the hot bus too it's always good to have one man and like I said this is a fake AB biased amplifier you know I don't never I'll just leave that up to the person but if anybody wants to know how to actually... Now, see, I wish I could speak to whoever designed these amplifiers. These amplifiers, the Boomers, uh, Boomer 600s, Palomar 400s, the amps you see with nothing on the front like these, uh, 1446s in them, they're all made by the same designer, same people. And the majority of them are going to be you're going to have your bias circuit but the bias circuit is cancel out because there's a choke on the input transformer to ground what happens when you take a choke let me put it this way what happens if you have some voltage and you take a piece of wire and put it to that voltage of ground you're gonna have a dead short right well since you have some resistance in this matter it's not a dead short but it just cancels out the dc so the DC is being shunted to ground instead of making it to the transistors. Okay, so these transistors are zero biased because of this choke to ground right here. All you simply have to do is go down there and unsolder it. But see, I'm not going to do that because I don't know if you want me to do that. Uh, you know, that's kind of something maybe on me just talking about this in videos will, will give people... Um, if they wish to do that or not and yes you know it's pretty much as simple at this point as putting a switch on that to switch from A, B to C it's that simple it really is um, I don't know maybe if they just went ahead and did this and made the boards like this because they thought well we'll just do the class C versions for these particular operators and all we got to do is keep the choke out for the AB versions, but I have not seen any AB versions of this. They're all grounded, so I, I don't really know. It's just uh, hypothetically thinking on my part, so I don't, I don't really know, man. But these are pretty crazy little amps. These are, man. If you get down and just study the circuitry of it, it's crazy. They, they've even got back here, which is absolutely no reason for it whatsoever. But they've got a capacitor. If you look at this little bitty capacitor right here that's next to the green cap I added, which is the 104 down here. See it? All right. That capacitor is soldered to the hot bus. You see that? Now watch this. Here's the same capacitor right here. Right there. You see it? And it's soldered to the hot bus. Now if you follow it back here, it's this trace right here, you see? This trace is your bias trace. It's carrying the bias voltage to your transistors. See, watch. See the sandbar right here? All right, the sandbar is right here, okay? The other piece of it solders to here. And as you see, this is a trace that goes kind of an upside down Y formation because this right here is you got the blue blue cap which is just a filter cap that goes to ground to filter out anything uh, any noise on the dc line and it goes to these two chokes which individually puts the bias to each base of the transistor all right but you see that it splits off this direction right here to this 1000 picofarad cap that goes to dc okay well dc cannot flow through a capacitor in series. What the hell, excuse me, what the heck is that capacitor even doing there? I don't know. I'll be honest with you, there, there's no use for that capacitor even being there. I, I have no idea why they added that capacitor there. And uh, I could understand if it was soldered to ground. Hey, maybe it's a design flaw. Maybe they actually meant to soldered at the ground but there again why would they have the extra uh, cap there when you've got your filter cap right here okay I don't know 
if you see these two blue caps right here these are your coupling caps that your DC flows through on the input going into the relay and then the output actually uh, leaving from the relay out the amp so anyway man we have to talk about all the stuff that ain't uh, the boring stuff to some people take a look at this bad boy now all right everything's the same we got it on high still the same voltage let me turn the supply back on I still got it on 15.2 you can see that it's dark out here now I don't know if you can see that but anyway it's 15.2 one of these days I'm going to update my bench but anyway I, I've got the 250 watt slug again we'll throw the thousand back in just so you can use it for reference that, like we were uh, looking at before but I just had this uh, in while I was tuning the output of the amplifier but take a look at this bad boy now 25 watt dead key we're looking at the top scale oh look at that over 75 RMS oh a little bit well about 80 RMS take a look at the peak man this is 250 watt slug Oh, two hundred and fifty watts. Hey, Breeze, I think this thing screwed cruising about two hundred and fifty watts. No doubt about it. Letting the mop flop. Old gatekeeper cruising out here around the northeast end of Georgia. Getting down, getting down, getting down, getting down. <laughs> I ain't talked on the radio in a while, y'all. I thought I'd start uh, uh, agrees, uh, uh, releasing some of my aggression from not uh, talking on the radio on my videos here. I need to get my butt on the air. I uh, lended my mobile out and uh, just got it back, so I need to get my radio and everything put back in it. But this thing's doing 250 watts, Breeze. So we got this thing rocking and rolling for you, Mr. Tom. Um... Let's put the thousand watt slug in it and just take a gander just so we can give me one second. I gotta use two hands to do this. I ain't as talented as some of these other builders out here that can take so much slugs out with one hand. <laughs> Alright, so I got the thousand watt slug in it. Let's take a look at it on RMS just to see the difference of uh, the two slugs. Oh, so we're selling about a hundred bird right here. You'll notice a little difference from slug to slug. Oh, right, they're about the same, man, on the peak, about 260 watts, man. Oh, 280 watts, actually, on the 1,000 watt slug right here. Just cruising, staying right there, about 250 peak. Break, break, break. All right, man. I'm happy to be able to get this thing up and rolling. I know you said that you had sold this amp. To somebody as is but after I told you hey man I got it fixed I got it fixed I had not yet made the uh, the rest of the video yet I had repaired it and was had it in line I'll do that sometimes while I'm working on repairs I'll get two three four sometimes five six repairs done and then uh, make the videos for them so I was like yeah hey, let me go get that video made and so, uh, Mr. Breeze can be happy that his amp's fixed. So, there you go, bud. This thing's sewed up, ready to go, man. Ready to get you on air, make a good driver. Um, I could hook up a bigger radio, but there really ain't no need, man. This thing's doing what it should be doing. You should never have any issues getting over to 250 watts out of, uh, um, 15 20 watts peak into a, a two fourteen forty sixes. This thing just needs a little bit of tender love and care, bud. That's all. And just did my little gatekeeper uh, TLC to it, man. She's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, bottom cover back on it and uh, shoot you a little text, uh, get you this video link, and uh, we're on to the next. Uh, you got something like this you want done? I am very backed up right now with repairs, but give me a shout. And uh, we can figure something out. Old gatekeeper set it out here around the northeast end of Georgia. I'm good and gone. Bye-bye.